So, you know, we've talked a lot about self-inquiry, mm. about when an emotion comes up or a response comes up, ask yourself who's having it or mm. when it's happening or where it's happening, to whom. But, you know, what's funny is that you start doing that a lot and you get a feeling. And that feeling feels indistinguishable from that word love. So what about love for the path in terms of uh, your own experience? And I, don't, I don't like love. <laughs> you love it? <laughs> no. No, I mean, the problem with love is it is such a compromised concept. Yeah. I mean, it is, it, we use it for everything from I love you yeah. to I, I love this ice cream, or whatever. And so it's such a, a word we view, overuse of the so other, other overused words in our lexicon. But that's one of the most overused words. It just has no meaning whatsoever now. And we just toss it around often as a bargaining chip mm. uh, to get something we want. So I, I, I tend not to use the word love. Even compassion, I don't like it because compassion now, my Buddhist friends, is such an overworked concept. And it means different things. I feel for them. <laughs> yeah, I have compassion for them. <laughs> but I mean, it's such an overworked concept that you don't really know what it means anymore. And 100 people, you ask them what compassion means, then it's a different thing. Mm -hmm. Christian, Jews, Buddhists have different ideas what compassion means. Mm -hmm. It's very, very secular sometimes, for the at other times, very much depending upon the area where they come from. So, it's to be a so no love, no love from Gary for love. <laughs> no, no love, <laughs> no love for love. But to me, the, you know, the greatest, this just harkens back to the Bible, I'm sure the expert. I mean, the greatest love you can have is to not, is to complete, offer yourself up to the situation. I mean, when you're with somebody, love them enough to be present for them. I mean, if, if you're there 35% of the time, how much can they possibly love you? If they don't care enough to be I'm with I'm sorry, what? what are you <laughs> if they, don't care, if they don't care to be with you when you're with them, then when, how can you possibly say you love them? To me, that's, that's what love is about, giving your life in nanosecond by nanosecond by nanosecond to whatever is directly in front of you is the greatest gift you can give. You're there 100%, no agenda, no special thing has to happen. You're just there for whatever happens. Right, this is the Greek term agape. So, so, if, so if, love is, if love is worn out mm. as a concept because it's been hallmarked, it's been right. a dating site, it's been <laughs> Valentine's Day, right? right. Uh, that maybe we want to bring this word agape in. Mm. Uh, and what's interesting is, is that we might even say that agape is the experiences that, that your life is not your own, actually. That when you're present and you're giving your life to whatever is right in front of you, mm -hmm. there's, it's, it's almost a joke because the idea that your life was ever yours mm -hmm. in the first place is what you feel evaporating. Yes. And, and it evaporates as, and that's a very good feeling, there's a loss of a burden. It's a loss of a feeling of separation. Mm -hmm. So in giving in that way, in fact, we experience what is trying to be named mm -hmm. by love. You, you, you experience real bliss mm -hmm. in that giving. Because in our tradition, we think, oh, you know, that, that I'm just meaning Western, Judeo, Christian tradition. If I give of myself, then I'm good. I feel good. Mm -hmm. I'm picking up trash by the roadside Look at as, me. The, yeah, Look as at the me. cars go around. Yeah. But in fact, as you really give of yourself, you feel that there is no self there to do the giving. And then life just ends up being one episode after another where you are. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and that you can feel when you are not. Mm -hmm. And guaranteed, when you feel that you are not, mm -hmm. if you observe your thoughts, there's something going in there. And that's why I, I do find, I still find the language of love useful, but only paired with this other phrase, which is shut up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> shut up in love, mm -hmm. right? So if you shut up that, th that the blah, 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 and just are there, right. then you have that experience of, you know, of losing your life mm -hmm. and gaining agape. Mm -hmm. You no longer have, like, where did this idea that our lives are our own anyway? come from? It's such a bizarre, elaborate construct. Right. I mean, even if you believe that there's somebody there to have it, how would it be yours by right? How would your life be yours by right when there are all these other people a 
upon which you depend and who depend upon you. But that may be mammalianly, Darwinianly evolved, that in fact we are there to put our genes forward, my genes forward. Not yours. Not yours, not my genes forward. And so that buys into this story that everything that happens to this is all about me getting my, my genes moved forward in space and time. The me meme. The me meme. Yeah. And so I, I think that's that's why the, the it's all about me thing comes in. We certainly take it to the max in our culture, where everything is about me. Not even putting my genes for it. Everything's about me. So we've kind of ruined that. It's my life. And I and the idea of try giving yourself away, which was a big concept a hundred years ago. But yeah. That idea of try giving yourself away. Can you give yourself away? And that idea of See if it's possible. See if you can give yourself away. And what happens out of that? You touched on what you just said. You know, if you can give it away, then see what happens after that. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah.